we will, thank you, we will get started here. Um, uh, so this is a session where you are going to meet some of the campaign student support team. Uh, you met Shannon briefly a minute ago. She was uh, our, our communications director. Um, but uh, we have Heather Antonini, our registrar. Um, we have Elena St. Ange, librarian, and Kelly Burke, our campus minister, and myself. I am the academic enrichment coordinator. I've been with you throughout the day here. Um, and yeah, we're just going to tell you a little bit about what we do, how we can help you. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll start with Heather. Hi. Uh, so my name is Heather. I'm the registrar at Campion. Um, I recognize some of the names here. I may have even been emailing with some of you just today. So it's good that you're here. This is great. Uh, in the registrar's office, um, our job is to walk with you as you make your way through the next few years of university. So while you're discovering what you want to learn and what you enjoy doing and what sort of things you like to do after university, we're there to help you along the way. Um, you may have met me already or one of our other advisors on Zoom when setting up your fall schedule back in April. Um, you're welcome to visit any of us throughout your time at the U of R. Uh, our advisors are me, Ian, Michael, and Caitlin, so you might remember those names, and Sarah helped us out also this uh, spring helping you pick out classes, so um, any, uh, any of us you can come visit. You can usually find us on the third floor of Campion, and as of Monday, we'll be starting to transition back to campus. Um, we'll be a, a small staff on campus, but um, a lot of you are still going to be uh, zooming in, so we'll be available for you uh, wherever you are. So you can talk to us by appointment in person or by Zoom, by email, or there's a chat function on the Campion webpage that you can use if you have a quick question. So we're here for you and we'll meet you wherever you are. Um, I encourage you to take advantage of talking to us on our services because it's exactly what we want to see. A lot of students start by saying, I'm sorry to bother you, but it's never a bother. This is why we're here. It's why all the Campion staff are here. We're here for you. Uh, we want you to tell us about you. We want to know what you want to learn, where you want to go, why you're here. Uh, and all of that is so that we can help you make the most of your experience while you're with us at university and to help you prepare for life after university. You might already know what you want to do four years from now. A lot of you may not know what you're going to do four years from now. Uh, and a lot of you might change your mind <laughs> over the next four years. Um, so we're there to help you all the way through and help you find that path. The first term coming up starts Monday. Uh, it might be overwhelming. You might have a lot of questions or feel lost without the same level of supervision you had in high school. People aren't watching you quite as closely as they did last year. So students often feel like they're on their own, especially when things are remote delivered. Um, you're left to figure out how to register for classes or navigate university systems and forms or access services, uh, or you don't even know what services exist. And that's why your advisors and all the staff at Campion are here. We're here to, to give you a home base. Um, it's a place to start when you have a question and an ally when you need help, right? So what kind of things might you come to talk to us about? Well, Maybe you want to do more than just sit in a classroom, not that sitting in a classroom is a bad thing, uh, but maybe you want to study in another country for a semester, right? Come talk to us about study abroad and go study in Hawaii or Australia or England and bring back transfer credit for your degree. Uh, you can get international designation on uh, your arts degree, for example. A lot of students are thinking about jobs that are available uh, that are related to their degree. So come talk to us about co-op and how you can add work terms to your degree. Uh, so a lot of students who um, do work in a co-op work term are hired by that same organization where they replaced. So it's a great way to add to your resume and uh, plan for the future. U of R also has certificates, uh, like business certificates, nonprofit organization and leadership, uh, and lots of others that can be integrated into your electives. An arts degree, as an example, even science degrees have a lot of open electives and students sometimes don't know what to do with that. Um, so we can help tailor your program to your interests. So you might graduate with a BA in English with a certificate in public relations, right? Uh, all with the same amount of time that you would uh, take with a BA. 
anything's possible. And usually all it takes is a conversation to make the connections that you need. So come talk to us. Um, so here's a few things uh, that I want you to think about, a few dates that I want you to think about. Um, the last day to drop classes with 100% refund is September 13th. Note that date down. So in the first couple of weeks of classes, you'll have a chance to try things out to see what you like uh, and what you don't like. And um, if you need to add classes, you can do so until the 13th. Try not to add classes in the second week of class or else you will uh, might feel behind, but you can definitely drop till the 13th. No uh, cost to you. Uh, as of the 27th, though, there's a 50% refund. So you get half your money back if you drop uh, on September 27th. That's also the deadline for paying your tuition. So if you're getting a scholarship, you might wait until uh, after that September 13th drop date. Scholarships are usually put on your account in the last couple of weeks of September. So it's totally fine if you're getting a scholarship to wait till the last week of September and pay before the 27th. Uh, last day to withdraw without a failing grade. You won't get any money back, but um, if you write your midterms in October and things don't go that great, uh, you can still withdraw from the class until November 15th. No money back, but no failing grade. I want you to just kind of plant seeds in your mind so you know what possibilities are. But let's assume everything's going well, first week, uh, first month, everything is going swimmingly. And you start thinking about January classes, we, we get you thinking early. Um, registration happens in October. So we in the registrar's office, we are here to help you with registration, with picking your classes if you need help. We'll even help you add and drop classes, make changes to your registration. Um, with the next registration period in October, make a note around Thanksgiving. I like to pin it down with a holiday. That's Ian's trick. Thanksgiving, I should contact my advisor and set up an appointment to pick out my classes for January. You'll probably register around the last week of October, but we'd like you to come in and have a conversation with us before your time ticket opens up so that you're ready to go on the day that you're able to register um, and able to just put classes in on the time ticket date at 9 a.m. or we can help you with that too. All right, now this is an important piece. Uh, if things start to go sideways, if you're struggling in a class or if life circumstances have come up that force school to take a back seat, come talk to me or to Ian. Um, we can help you explore options to get you through or out of your classes. So there's options like tutoring, there's writing support at Campion and in the Student Success Office. There's a math and stats center on the fourth floor of Campion. It's also offered remotely at this time. Um, there are student success workshops, and these are free workshops that you can take on note taking, on time management, on exam anxiety. Um, and they're half an hour, an hour long. You can fit them into your schedule, take them for free, get some a leg up, just like Dr. Phoenix was teaching you about. All of this is there and you can always come talk to us and get information about all of these services. Um, if you need to get out of a class though, we can also help you with that. We can help you withdraw after that date if things have come up. Um, you're adults now and with that comes responsibilities and stress and unforeseen circumstances, right? And you can come talk to us about anything you want to or need to share. Um, there's lots of services on campus to support mental health, like Counseling Services, Center for Student Accessibility. Um, there's lots available for you. Uh, and we can help kind of direct you towards those services and help you get out of a class if you need to. Um, the other piece though, since you're adults, we are obliged by law to protect your privacy. So if your parents call and ask what grades you got in your math class, we can't even confirm that you're in that math class or are a student of Camping College. If you drop all of your classes and your partner calls to find out what you're taking, we can't confirm that you are or are not registered. So our, our offices are a safe place. So I want you to understand that and know that we are protecting your privacy now. So come have a conversation with us. Um, we're open 8.30 to noon and 1.15 to 4.30, Monday to Friday. Do reach out to us. Um, check in at least once a semester. We're here with you from admission to graduation. We love watching you cross the stage at convocation. It's always fun. You're always welcome. You're never a bother. 
So please come talk to us. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you so much, Heather. Um, and with that, we'll move on to Elena, who is our campion librarian. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, so I'm Elena St. Ange, and uh, I work in the library with Angela Carnell. She's uh, over there, but she's busy doing IT stuff, which is another thing that she does with one of her many hats. Um, so I, we're located on the second floor of Campion College. That's where I am right now, but we're actually this fall going to be physically closed and like primarily working remotely. Um, so I, right now, like we're still here to help you. And the best way to contact us is campion.library at eregina.ca. I feel like either Shannon or Jose is like adding stuff in the chat. So if they don't mind adding that one, that would be great. Um, so it's an email address. Thanks, you guys are awesome. Um, so it's an email address, but it's something that during regular business hours, the same ones that Heather was mentioning, the 8.30 to noon and 1.15 to 4.30, um, <laughs> little blush, that's cute. Uh, so between those hours, we watch that pretty carefully, both Angela and I keep an eye on that email. So usually we don't take too long to respond. The other thing that we can do is we can always jump onto a Zoom. We can give you a call. We can do like whatever is the most convenient or continue by email, whatever. So um, again, don't just feel like because we're closed, we're not here because we absolutely are and we're always happy to help. Um, okay, so today I just kind of want to go over two things. We're not going to go too in depth into anything because I feel like by the time you're wanting to do like uh, library research in your classes, um, you might have forgotten what I've said, which makes sense because this is a lot of information today. So just a couple of intro things. First, I'm going to introduce you to campus libraries in general and talk about the kinds of things that we can help you with. And then the second thing is I want to show you the actual library homepage and how to do just a basic search uh, in that for library resources. So first of all, we are one of four libraries on campus. So there's the Dr. John Archer Library, which is like the main library. It's got six floors. It's sometimes just called the library, um, but there are three other libraries. So Campion College, First Nations University of Canada and Luther College, we each have our own libraries as well. Um, so this fall, Luther is like us. We're both going to be closed to the public. Um, and like, that's a lot of our, uh, classes this fall are remote, so we had to kind of make that tricky decision with kind of our smaller staff um, to kind of focus more on the remote classes. Uh, but First Nations University and Archer Library, um, they will both be open. Uh, so if you have, you know, if you want to use a computer or study space or anything like that, those two libraries will be open in the fall. Um, the main thing that I think people don't understand when they first come to the university, at least I didn't back in the day when I was an undergrad here, um, as students who are registered for classes, it doesn't matter where you're registered through Campion or elsewhere, you have equal access to all four of those libraries. So you can sign out materials, you can use the e-resources, you can ask questions of the staff of any of those libraries. Um, in kind of normal times, you can use the computers and study space at any of those libraries. So never feel like because you're a Campion student, you can't use, you know, First Nations University Library or because you're a Luther student, you can't use Archer or whatever. You're just, you're equal everywhere. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, the other thing I kind of wanted to talk about is when you might use the library. So I think there's always that sense of like, okay, well, the library's where the books are and I can go find some books, but also there's Google. <laughs> so, um, eh, you know, you are, there's going to be no escaping it. You're going to have to use the library for your research and your classes at university. Um, so uh, professors often ask you, you to use scholarly or academic sources in your work. So if you have questions about like, what does that mean and how do I know if it's scholarly, a library is a good place to go to. Um, other questions you might have are like, how do I find books? How do I find journal articles on my essay topic? What is a journal article? Because I didn't know what that was when I started my undergrad. Um, how do I access e-resources? If I need to watch like a streaming film through the library or I need to access an e-book, how do I even do that? Uh, maybe your professor says to you, I want you to cite your paper using a particular citation style. So APA style or MLA style or Chicago style. Um, so what does that mean? Those are different styles and ways of uh, like formatting a paper, but also ways of documenting your sources that you've used, so like a bibliography at the end, but there's very specific rules for each of those. If you <laughs> have any questions about that, they can be, yeah, confusing and uh, 
yeah, so there's different resources that we can direct you guys to if you have questions about how to cite something or what MLA even means. Like any of those questions, just come and talk to us. I think sometimes people, uh, especially at the start of university, have that sense, kind of like Heather was saying too, is like, I don't want to bother the librarian or I should know this already or everybody else knows how to find books or everybody else knows what journal articles are. And like, no, <laughs> like this is a pretty steep learning curve. University libraries and university research can be quite different from high school research. So this is, we are here, I'm here, Angela's here to help you with those kind of questions and get you kind of uh, started in your researching careers. Um, well, you know, at university anyway. So uh, the other thing I wanted to say is, even if I don't know the answer to one of the questions you're asking, I can always direct you to somebody else. So if you're asking, asking questions about like, uh, an Indigenous Studies course. And if I feel like I'm not answering you well enough, I know that Paula at First Nations University Library is more of an expert in helping with that. So I can always put you in touch with Paula as well. Or, you know, Robert Thomas, who's the history librarian at Archer, I could direct you to him. So we've got like, we've got kind of a network as well. So uh, a good place to ask questions. So the second part that I kind of wanted to touch on is just I want to quickly show you the library homepage. So I'm just going to switch something around on my screen one second here. And all right, I hope I can share. Yep, I can. You see the library homepage there? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thanks, guys. Uh, okay, so library homepage. Um, this is anywhere from the U of R home site, uh, homepage, site, whatever, anywhere that's U of R is uh, the library is just top and center. I like to think it's because we're really important. Um, but anyway, we're easy to find. So you can click on that, it brings you to this library homepage. Uh, one thing I want to point out is this current library services link. So if you have questions about like, can I sign out physical books again? Can I like access this library or that library? All of that is listed there. You can also just email me and I can answer you as well, but this is a good option. So quick find is this first tab here. So what quick find is, is that this is the uh, tool that we use to search for print and electronic resources on campus at all four libraries. So it's a really good tool to get to know. Uh, I'm going to do like the briefest ever demo of it today, but just to give you a sense of what this is. Um, you can just start searching right here from the basic search. That's actually my preference. It's a pretty good basic search, but you can also go to the advanced search. I do want to show you something on the advanced search. Um, and that is, I'm not sure exactly where my head shows up for you right now, but um, I might be blocking. In the top right corner, you can log in and oh, Heather says you can see it, so that's perfect. So you would just click on that. Sign in with your username. It's the same as you are courses, the uregina.ca one. Um, and then there's two reasons we're doing that. One is you'll get more results. So there's some different resources that we have that until you've proven that you're a U of R student, they won't show those results. So that's one good reason. Another good reason is if you want to request uh, print materials, those options don't show up until you've logged in. So just really important thing. If you forget, there will be like a big yellow bar across here that's like, sign in. And so sign in. <laughs> it's a good reminder. Sometimes I need it. Anyway, so this is an advanced search. We could like put in multiple search terms and combine them with ands and ors and nots. I'm just going to go back to the basic search today because, again, I prefer it. And I'm going to search for, uh, oops, I almost used the wrong uh, keyboard here, uh, women and astronomy. You'll notice I used AND in all caps. This is because it's called a Boolean operator. We can talk about this more when it's time to start actual searching, but basically it's just putting it in all caps tells the system that this is me using it as like a joining word, kind of to like combine these two search terms and only get the overlap between them. So you don't get everything about women and everything about astronomy, just stuff about both of them. So I do my search. And from here, I get 60 some thousand results. That's way, way, way too many. Uh, so I can refine my search over on the left, and there's resource type here. I can select books. Well, I have to show more and then click books. That'll limit it to print books and ebooks. Um, I'm going to very, very quickly show you. So if it says online access, that means it's an ebook. So if I click on the title, I would just scroll down to where it says view it and click on the link. I'll be asked to provide my username and password in something that looks like this screen. So that's going to pop up whenever you try and access an e-resource from the U of R. Don't be alarmed. Just provide your username and password again. Um, I'm on campus, so I couldn't actually show you in real time. But uh, once you provide that information, it'll bring you straight to the e-resource. Uh, back to here. 
So that's an e-resource. Again, let me know when you actually get to that point if you don't remember that. And if I scroll down all these state online access, we've got so many ebooks now. This one is a print book though. So it's available at Archer Library. If I click on that, so Archer Library actually will be open as of next week. So you could just go to the shelf and find it on the shelf at the Q141 section. If you need help with that, just ask somebody for help. This is probably a different system than you used in high school for finding books on the shelf. If you wanted to request that book, or if you wanted to request a book from Campion or Luther while we're closed, um, you can scroll down to this get it section. And this is where we see this request option. So this is the thing that I said, if you're not logged in, you won't see the request. Anyway, you can just click request, fill out the form, hit request, and you should get like an email confirmation once it's ready to be picked up. Right now, books from Campion and uh, Luther and First Nations uh, are all being picked up at Archer Library. Uh, once First Nations University is opened up, I assume you can sign them out there as well. Um, but for now, if you want Campion books, they just get picked up at book lockers at Archer Library. So I think that's everything I'll go into. That's probably still more information than you wanted. But when it's time to start doing research and you need, you know, three sources for this class and you just don't even know where to start, we're the place to start. So uh, give us an email and we'll talk to you then. I'm really uh, detecting a theme uh, already emerging in this session um, that if you are struggling and, and not sure where what you need or, or how to do something, like reach out to us. That's what we're here for. And, and I think I speak for all my colleagues when I say we're actually excited to hear from you and like and to have engaged students and, and have these conversations, you know. This is uh, this is the stuff we like to do. Like uh, I know I know Elena would would rather um, get a request for help from a student than just sit by yourself in her office all day. So um, we're, we're waiting to hear from you. Uh, I'll move on to my bit now. Um, so uh, one of the things that I do in my work at Campion is things like this, organizing events and uh, um, working on special projects like what we're doing right now at this very moment. But, uh, and um, the, the big message that I have to share with you today is that if you want to get something more out of your education, whether that's you want to do more research and you need to talk to Elena or you want to uh, explore what your options for your degree are and you need to talk to Heather and her team, um, reach out. We're excited to help. And so my areas of expertise that I'm excited to help you about, help you out with are uh, volunteering and careers. So on the volunteering side, um, typically, my work is focused on the Engaged Learning Program. So what that is, is it's an opportunity to volunteer as part of your class and make a connection between what you learn out in the community and what you learn in the classroom. Uh, that program is on pause for the moment, but watch for it to come back in winter 2022. You'll be hearing from me in your classes if you have a class with an Engaged Learning option. But even if uh, you don't have the opportunity to do Engaged Learning, um, and you, anyone who is interested in community involvement, I really welcome you to reach out to me. Um, you know, whether that means you want to get back to volunteering, you have done it in the past, and you want to try and get back out in the community again, or if you know that you need to volunteer because, uh, you know, you want to go into social work, or you want to have something on your resume, or you just think it might be fun, I can help you with that too. Uh, a lot of students feel quite intimidated by the array of options that are out there. You know, they, um, they know that there's lots to do in the community, but they don't know where to start. And so that's something I can really be helpful with um, is taking that first step. Uh, Cause I've helped students through that lots and lots of times and we can, we can work together to find something that will work for you. On the career side, this is relatively new. Um, so uh, I'm able to provide a certain amount of career support to students. So uh, something to know is lots of students change their mind about what they want their career to be partway through university. Um, and lots of students, you know, start university and don't really know um, what they wanna be when they grow up. And neither of those things are a problem. Um, <laughs> those are just both perfectly ordinary situations for students. But if it's something that's stressing you out or it's something that's making it hard for you to pick classes or you just wanna, you know, talk about those things, uh, I can be a support for you. So I can be a sounding board for ideas. I can, you know, 
come into your life as a neutral person who's not like your parent or um, somebody with a stake in what you do for a living grow as you go forward and um, give you some information about the ideas that you have. Um, I can also, if you're the type of person who you just want to like figure it out on your own and Google your best friend and you just want to do it by yourself, I can point you to resources that will be helpful to you as you work on that. Um, and, um, you know, if you know exactly what you want your career to be, you know, what you want to be, you know, what you want to do, but you're not sure how to get there, I can also provide some support for that. And that's actually something that Heather's team can be great for too, is knowing like, okay, well, what degree program do I need? Or I know it's really hard to get into medical school. What kinds of things can I do to better my chances? So that's something we can work together on. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is, um, just like the others, you can always reach out to me if you have questions or um, you have ideas about things that you want to do, but you don't know how to make those into a reality. I, I, I welcome you to reach out to me um, and uh, keep your eye out for some career related workshops that I'm going to be putting together coming up in the coming academic year. So that is my very quick piece and uh, I can <laughs> I can ask Jose to continue staffing the chat for us. And uh, my email address is just my first and last name at uregina.ca, which is uh, a good thing to know most uh, university staffers that will be there, the formula for their email address. Uh, and with that, I will pass it over to Kelly, who is our uh, campus minister. Hello, all. Yes, uh, Kelly Burke, and I'm a chaplain at uh, Campion, but also uh, myself and the other um, chaplain on campus uh, uh, we serve the um, the entire university population and just sort of uh, work collaboratively um, uh, towards that end. Uh, anyway, but our obviously um, uh, being able to have us right here, uh, uh, you know, in house with you and uh, and my office is uh, and myself. I am uh, focused on being able to be uh, a support and uh, um, and resource for all of you. So um, let's see. I'm starting with a few things. Uh, yeah, for for myself. Um, uh, I've worked in ministry for many years and I've been here for a couple of years. And so I think I now know some of the answers people are, you know, <laughs> coming by to uh, to ask for that might be specific to U of R, but I'm also excited uh, to go digging for information too. So if there's uh, something you need help with, I am absolutely on that list of, uh, of uh, uh, working out some connections for you. Um, I, this fall, I will be um, partly on campus, uh, like three days a week and, uh, and partly uh, virtual. So uh, um, yeah, I can be reached and there'll be programming that is both um, uh, in person and virtual happening this term. Uh, so here we are on this uh, new adventure. I mean, all of us coming back is kind of a new adventure, but also uh, for all of you beginning um, uh, this, uh, you know, adventure of uh, post-secondary studies, and it is so exciting, and perhaps it's also a little uh, anxiety producing. And so these can be good things and you can utilize them to your great advantage, um, but also I think it's important to address, um, hey, what do I do with those things and those feelings and how do I sort of manage that and, and and um, keep some balance and all of that, because we can wear ourselves out uh, with excitement as, as easily as uh, anxiety um, as well. But kind of taking a look at what are our strategies. And so one of the pieces of, uh, that I work on uh, in campus ministry is, uh, is mental health supports. And, and ultimately, uh, we all do, knowing that that's uh, like a key piece. Uh, so I certainly do some pastoral counseling myself. But I want to talk about some basic kind of strategies uh, that each person can build for themselves. And it's just like a little kind of, hey, how about a plan? Um, so what are the things that might help uh, kind of keep balance, keep you on track, um, you know, keep a, a reasonable pace um, uh, and help out when things get tough? So uh, <laughs> that one especially. And to be able to remember the important things. So it might be that it's, you know, if you were uh, camped out on a um, uh, a beach, um, uh, enjoying uh, relaxation, it's easy, here's my list of important things. But you know, when we're sort of feeling under the pressure, how easily are we kind of remembering uh, what are the things that are really important? And so uh, just uh, really um, uh, the importance of being able to say that um, uh, feeling connected um, is important and we're not and when we're not feeling connected um, that's something that you know can can happen but if it's continuous then it's something that's going to cause us some challenges feeling joy 
Uh, again, it doesn't mean that every moment or every day or every week is going to be filled with joy, but if we're not experiencing joy, then that's something we need to go and get some uh, assistance with. And it's not something where it's like, oh, <laughs> there, there, there's something broken and I need to, I need to take it in. We actually all need to address our mental wellness and when we're experiencing challenges, and we all will at some point here and there. And so it's important that when things are going pretty well, or even when we have a few concerns, that we establish some relationships and some strategies uh, for what we might do or who might be able to help us when things are a little more rough. And that really will help out uh, when that does occur. So, um, and then also even just things like, you know, uh, if you are able to sleep well, things go well. If you're not able to sleep well, uh, it's amazing what doesn't, <laughs> doesn't go as planned. And so all of these little things. And so again, some of these things, it's like stress and other factors. Um, even uh, if you had a, a housemate who you had struggled to get along with, um, those are things that can, can cause uh, stress that, that plays out for you. So know that we're all here to help you out with that, but, uh, um, uh, but definitely something that it's like you at least have a, an ear to, uh, <laughs> to listen to your concerns and, and I think some helpful suggestions for what might be um, uh, useful. Um, so now, uh, let's see, one of the things that I was going to suggest is that um, if you have, and you might already have sort of a plan in mind, but um, a suggestion is to have um, a buddy, somebody that you have an arrangement with to do a little check-in. And, and maybe it's that two-way kind of thing, but it's, it's just to sort of say, hey, how are you doing? But then actually have a tangible sort of, um, maybe there's a number um, or maybe there's a, a, a color, whatever sort of dynamic kind of helps to say, hey, one is really fantastic. Uh, 10 is um, uh, um, barely hanging on or I'm not hanging on. And so uh, where are you? And, and just to be able to say, hey, if I ever say I'm out of five, um, then maybe uh, remind me of this or maybe tell me to get in touch with, you know, whoever, you know, whatever it might be. So just to be able to have sort of somebody who is able to kind of connect that way. And uh, so whether you already have uh, somebody who could play a role like that, or, uh, or maybe a friend that you think, um, uh, you know, is a possibility that actually uh, before a term begins or before, so, you know, ups and downs uh, can go around to be able to have a conversation just to sort of see if you can sort of set something in place that might be helpful to you later on. And maybe it's helpful to you in like two and a half years, but it was a good conversation and it was a good start. And, and actually maybe there's something really supportive and helpful about that check-in that never really goes anywhere, but it's, but it's been, been good to know that that support was there. Okay, uh, some other pieces uh, is that, oh, and, and of course the other bit is to, uh, uh, as part of that strategy, is to um, take the time to introduce yourself to one or more of uh, the team members you're seeing here and some of the other staff, um, uh, because we, uh, we want to support you. And uh, if you're able to kind of connect with us and, and get to know us uh, a wee bit and we get to know you a wee bit ahead of time, then I think it makes things uh, easier for you. Um, when it comes to a time that you have something you need some help with. Okay, uh, other bits we have uh, the, um, there are some opportunities for you to get involved, um, whether it's um, uh, kind of an event um, uh, online or in person or um, uh, a project you can help with. Um, and those sorts of things. We have a peer support team that we are just working out some details on this term and will launch by next term. And that'll be out of our main U of our um, uh, kind of health um, uh, offices that we will have these uh, peer support team members. And so those peer support um, team members will be students who have volunteered and then are trained to uh, be a listening ear for really basic kind of stuff so that students know that another student um, would be present and that doesn't uh, replace um, or take away any of the uh, wonderful counseling services that we have um, that deal with um, all sorts of things, uh, big and small. But knowing that if somebody's feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm dealing with this and I just want to like kind of get in touch. And one thing that those team members potentially will be doing is to help somebody get in touch with counseling services and with our other counseling kind of supports on campus. Um, so anyway, so if that's something that interests you, we have a peer support team at Campion and that one uh, more broadly than 
the listening ear is also folks that will help out with um, uh, projects that are happening, uh, events that are in person or uh, online, and basically uh, sharing your gifts in support of the activities that are happening. And uh, uh, that one comes as well with a little bit of a, a stipend uh, per semester. So, uh, uh, so there's a little uh, advantage there as well. Let's see, um, in general, campus ministry can help out uh, with finding more information or even accessing uh, like mental health services, I was, as I was mentioning, uh, financial resources. Um, uh, if you're struggling um, and, uh, and, and maybe it's not the, the regular timing or whatever, you can come uh, chat with us and, uh, but also other times being able to ask those questions and then uh, we can always go digging in <laughs> and find the information. Uh, and certainly, if I if I don't know something, I am uh, excited to go and do the research on it. So other possibilities um, and things that will kind of connect with uh, what Sarah was commenting on is um, uh, we have volunteer opportunities and uh, kind of team kind of projects like uh, one of them uh, is a new opportunity is is prison ministry. And so that's something that uh, I think uh, Sarah and I will chat further for it to per perhaps to become a part of one of her regular pieces. But we have sort of if anybody's interested in uh, being a part of a kind of a pilot project uh, in that do get in touch with me because uh, and then that'll have a process of um, um, uh, screening and that sort of thing, but uh, but it'll get people on board just to have a, a sense of that and and um, and begin um, kind of understanding uh, the circumstances. And then prison ministry as well. We have a, a group, um, friends on the outside, is a group that meets um, once a week. And uh, for those that have been in prison and uh, friends and supporters of those that have been in prison and we kind of meet for coffee and just get to know each other. And it's, it's about presence. It's about uh, dignity of every person. It's about hope and it's about support and friendship. And so that's something that uh, students are most welcome to uh, uh, come and check out and be a part of. And so if that interests you, let me know. Uh, many things on truth and reconciliation. Um, uh, whether it's uh, a reading or discussion group, um, visiting uh, reserves and communities, uh, there's some opportunities there. There's a program called ANARC, which is uh, Aboriginal, non-Aboriginal um, uh, relationship building that uh, is, is a potluck with leaders and their families and, uh, and, and people coming together. And it's a wonderful conversation, has uh, a meal and then um, a sharing um, in a uh, indigenous um, uh, style that's um, uh, a real chance to connect. And it's been happening for 10 years, but uh, we've had students involved in the last couple of years. There's social things as well. We have a coffee time that will be online. And uh, and and at some point we might do, a, right now we're doing a little like one-off coffee. If you wanna uh, meet up and have coffee, uh, uh, I'm happy to do that. And then the virtual one is the kind of group gathering. And then also there's something called the, uh, the dinner table. Um, which um, is uh, a little bit of a, hey, let's get together and, um, and cook something. So if you're on your own and you don't have a, a stack of recipes that will, you know, taste good, save you some time um, uh, and, uh, and be uh, cost effective on the budget, um, then uh, sign up for that one and we'll do um, uh, a little series, but also perhaps just a, a one-off uh, to give it a chance to be able to um, make something and then have it for a few meals coming up uh, with without always eating the same thing or without, you know, craft dinner being your, your only food group. <laughs> and there's things like meditation and retreats, uh, liturgies. We have a Sunday night a liturgy on campus and a Thursday at noon. And, um, and then there's some exciting conferences coming um, in uh, October, a couple of them, and then some be that. And so hearing about those opportunities and knowing kind of what's happening, we do have some places to tell you about what's happening. Um, one of them is the Facebook group um, uh, Campion Campus Ministry Connect, uh, and perhaps uh, like a little link or something could go up if, if possible. And the other um, would be uh, to, um, you know, kind of connect uh, directly and, and receive some information there. And we'll ha certainly have some things that go out on our uh, Campion social media generally. Um, but it's a good place to, if you're on Facebook, to connect with that one because there'll be some regular things that pop up and if something interests you, you can reach out. All right, thank you, Kelly. And thank you, uh, all of you, all my colleagues. Um, 
we haven't had a ton of time uh, so far today. Uh, you, we've been firing a lot of information at you and uh, we haven't had a ton of time to pause and uh, ask questions and, and reflect on things a little bit. So I do invite you to put a question in the chat and I will read it out to our group here. It can be about something very specific or something very general. I, we have uh, a lot of expertise gathered in this Zoom call at this moment, many, many rounds through the first, first day of classes uh, between the four of us here. Um, so, but just to kind of get that conversation started, um, I wanna ask the panel, um, what is something that you think is really helpful for first, first year students to know? What's, uh, whether that's something kind of related to your own area or something outside of that? There's so much. <laughs> There's so much. Um, the key thing is that you're not alone, um, that you are, it's gonna feel different. There's always a transition from high school to university and that's normal. It's normal to feel a little bit lost or confused or um, without direction to feel like studying is hard and classes are hard and everything's different. Uh, and to not have a guidance counselor or homeroom teacher or somebody kind of watching over you, even a, a guardian or parent watching over you every step of the way. Um, that, that's a scary thing, but it's really exciting too. Here's a chance for you to embark on this journey, which um, I would encourage you not to just look to the end, right? Don't look to the end of the four years from right from the start. Let this be a journey all the way through, uh, but know that you're not alone. Come to camp and come see us and ask for help when you need it. That's my very general info. <laughs> Elena, did you have something on that? I have a question in the chat here, but if you want to add uh, something. Yeah, I think that maybe like coming from my own first year experience, I think I was just really hesitant to ask questions. And I think that's why we're all just like, ask the questions because this is like what we are here for. But I know from the other's perspective as a student, like that was just a thing that I just didn't understand that like that's what people were expecting me to do because I was always worried about like, you know, seeming like I really have it all figured out and stuff, whereas like these people are here because that's their job to answer those questions. So when I don't know where to pay my tuition or, you know, things like that, like whatever, it's just, I think just like keeping in mind that there are no silly questions. There's no dumb questions. There's no, like, this is just really, this is you learning your way and we are the people who are there along the way. So I think that's my general question, whether it's asking, you know, in the library, if you have a question or whether it's asking like, I don't know, somebody who's in the same class as you, like, did you understand that lecture? Or like, whether it's asking your professors a question, like, I just didn't understand what you said. Can you help me out with that or whatever? Like, I think that's maybe just something that is just keep in mind that sometimes it's hard to ask questions, but don't let like a feeling of this is a silly question or I should already know this, like stop you from that. Uh, so the question that we have from the chat here, oh, sorry, Kelly, did you have something to add? Well, I was just gonna tag on and say, you know, if you uh, kind of feel uh, intimidated in any way about asking questions or, or don't have a question formulated, um, really <laughs> feel free to show up at one of our offices and say, listen, I what question, you know, oh, what question would you ask? Or, uh, all right, hey, I'm here, just tell something to me. You know, like, like break the ice however you want. There is no, uh, there's, there's no uh, awkwardness. Um, so it's all good. And you're most yeah. welcome. You can show up at, at Kelly's office and not have a question and just say, uh, here's the situation. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so the question is, I have some classes online and some in person on the same day. Are there places either in the main part of the U of R and or specifically in Campion that are good to do online classes or even just to study? Hmm. This is a good question and one that I'm still sort of trying to sort out. So um, like in normal times, if you were just wanting to study, I would say like come to Campion Library. Of course, we're not open this fall for physical space. So um, that's like a, yeah, not really good answer. But I know Archer Library has study spaces that you can use. But my understanding in normal times at Archer, they have like this color-coded system where if you're in this zone or that zone, you use that zone, you can be like, quiet conversations or complete silence or like there's kind of like signs about like how like loud you can be so 
I actually, it's a really good question because I don't know exactly what the library levels will allow in terms of taking a class. So if you were like sitting and passively taking a class and weren't planning to speak, that's one thing. But if you want to be able to engage it all, then you might be kind of limited in the libraries. That said, I know like there's Wi-Fi all around campus. And I know that at least at some points last year, there were some spaces in, guys, help me out here. What's the building beside lab building? Rick, yes, uh, Research and Innovation Center. Like, I think there were some spaces set up there. So there are some spaces on campus. The other thing is, and again, I will talk to maybe or ask Sarah or Kelly and see if they are more in the know than me, but the main floor of Campion is, uh, it's called the Student Commons. Now I'm mm -hmm. saying, the, yeah, Student Commons. So just like on the main floor, we have a lot of seating and stuff. I'm not sure how that's going to be configured in the fall, but my understanding is we should be able to access that. But do you guys know better than me? Yeah, there will be something. So, uh, so it'll be you know sort of much less than usual, or whatever. But it it's a fantastic space, and so yeah, certainly uh, like you know I think the building closes at four or four thirty. I'm forgetting that anyway. But basically, it's like it's it's much less time than usual and much less space. Um, but there's still great spots to you know sort of sit and uh, uh, and and read or even sign on for a course because there isn't uh, any restrictions uh, to uh, volume like speaking in a course. Yeah, so uh, I think it would be worthwhile uh, to kind of check out the space um, on uh, on Monday when it opens up. Uh, the main floor of Campion can be a good, a good, a, might be a, a potential option for you. Um, so any final comments from anyone on the panel before we wrap up? Oh, will there be more opportunities and events to get to know other students and staff members online and or in person throughout the semester? There were workshops throughout July and August, but I was only able to attend a few of them. Uh, um, Sarah, just picking up on that one, um, there are a few things. Uh, one of the projects um, previously, and I didn't um, uh, actually get through to many of the professors, we're going to do a little uh, virtual introduction of professors and let them chat a little bit about their subject area. So that might be something that's of interest. And basically, if you, you want to connect to me, you can say, uh, listen, can you put me on a list of things that come up? Because there will be the stuff that's planned for the semester, but there's also going to be added opportunities that come along. And so, uh, you know, if you're watching for those where you want a little mail out on it, then those are options. I think the short answer is yes, we will have events and there will be opportunities for you to do cool things and uh, meet other people. Um, so, you know, follow us on social media. It's a good, uh, it's a good plug for you. Uh, Jose, who has been running the chat for us, is on the communications team and so she can, uh, she can uh, make sure uh, you're in the, in the loop and, uh, and uh, one piece of advice for students starting out is keep an eye on your email because a lot of things come through email and it might not be your most natural way of communicating. It might not be like the easiest thing for you, but it's a huge difference uh, in students' uh, experience. You know, there's so many things that come through email from the extremely important notice that you need to pay your tuition right now or you know things of that nature to things like events and activities that you can access. Uh, if I can't find my in-person classes, is there somewhere I can go for help finding them? When in doubt, if you're stuck, if you're lost, come to Campion to the third floor and see Ian or I or even Michelle, somebody. I have walked students to their classroom if need be. There are maps on, uh, on the website, but if you're lost and I can't, what is EA 106? I have no idea. I will walk you to the education auditorium. It, but come see us and we can help you out for sure. I thought of one other first year thing that I kind of wish I had known. I'm really shy and I wish I had known to introduce myself to my instructors and maybe someone else in the class. Come up with a weird question or a normal question. Uh, just an excuse to go say, hi, Dr. Phoenix. I was wondering about that thing you said about memory. And then he learns that, oh, your name is Heather. And when you get that conversation going, you become a person to your instructor and all kinds of opportunities start to arise. Things you didn't even know about research that comes later on or some opportunity that's down the road that is uh, through connections with people. Okay, one last question before we wrap up. Uh, and uh, the question is, all of our class lecture Zoom meetings will show up on your courses the first day of class, right? Yes, they will. All right. If you have any issues with UR courses, contact your instructor. If something's missing, contact the instructor of that class. Excellent. 
So we are gonna take another five minute break and then we will be gathering again for our final session of the day with our uh, illustrious president, Dr. Sammy, Hel Dr. Father, Father Dr. Sammy Halloa. Um, and, um, but I wanna say thanks very much to Heather, Elena and Kelly for uh, being part of this discussion. And thanks to everybody for participating in this one. That was really great.